Hello boys and girls, Pearl of Wisdom here, and this is my one take, one shot, no frills, trade videos, and rumors, and news, and all that sort of things like that. It's the Pearl of Wisdom show. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't edit or nothing. And today we're going to be talking about the Melka <coughs> from the Arizona Coyotes. I have an article that suggests that he may be available by the Arizona Coyote, and that perked my ears up right away, because Vamelka, we're going to look at his numbers, we're going to look at like six or seven teams that he could go to, we're going to look at the article, and we're going to look at what the Arizona Coyotes might be able to get back for him, but when we look at his numbers, take it with a grain of salt. He's on a really bad team. It's kind of a guy you got to watch to know how good he really is. However, there's one thing, and if you're a hockey fan, you've probably heard this before. His name has become an adjective because he uh, Arizona Coyotes will win games, and commentators and such and people in general have coined the term the other team was Vemelka'd. That's, you know, he steals games. He's one of those kind of goaltenders that can steal a game for you. And he's damn good at it, by the way. Uh, I'd say he's up there. I think he could be up there with Sorokin, with the big boys, Shesterkin, guys like that. And if he's available, man, oh, man, there should be some people in on it. I know I would. I would be all over it. We're going to look at my team while we do this too. And and so the first the first teams that we look at are the least likely and then it goes to the most likely to be able to pick up the Melka. So, let's turn our attention to by the way, Steel Flyers All Sports Network. If you like all sports, all the four major sports and teams within those sports, you'll like Steel Flyers. Also, if you're a professional, if you like to make money, I'm a professional handicapper. You can go to bpow, bpowpicks.com, where we are up over 100 units this season. If you don't know what units are, I'll explain all that to you over there. Let's just put it this way. We're up a lot of money. And we have frolic. It's fun. Okay. So, let me hit this. Yay! Here is the article. There's several, but I like uh, Ethan Hetu. I think that's how you say it. He too or Hetu? I don't know. I've, I, he, I, I read his stuff a lot on Twitter, and uh, so I thought I would go with that. I like to promote guys too. This is on uh, Pro Hockey Rumors. The Arizona Coyotes reportedly open to trading Carl Vemelka. Um, Arizona haven't been very good this year, and they're recently sitting close to the basement. Yes, poor performance has come despite the efforts of netminder Carl Vomelka, who has greatly impressed this season. He certainly has. Vomelka's box numbers are not great. We'll, we'll look at that later. Money Pucks. Yeah, go to Money Puck. This is a great one. I wanted to show this too, but they already have it here which tracks how well a goalie is performed relative to how an average goalie would be expected to form, perform. The Melka ranks ninth in the entire NHL. He's nipping at the heels of guys I just mentioned, Shosturkin and Vasilevsky, which speaks volumes to the level he's played. He has been absolutely awesome. Sometimes he has his days, but... I mean, for the most part, when this guy is on, he is almost like he can, it's almost impossible to get anything by him. Uh, Sportsnet's Jeff Merrick, who does a lot of this reporting on stuff like this now, might come as a surprise on last night's hockey broadcast. Merrick reported that the Coyotes would part with the Melka if the deal is right. Um, since So you would ask yourself, then, why would they want to trade such a great goaltender? Well, first of all, goaltenders are probably the easiest to find. Personally, I'm a little iffy on whether I would do this or not. 
but it's very possible, and it doesn't mention that here, but it is very possible that Vimalka, who is 26 years old, has kind of thought, you know what, I think I'd take all the years I can to win a cup. Maybe this isn't the best place for me. And also, Vimalka wins games for them, which is not really what they're trying to do right now. <laughs> they really want to get either Connor Bedard or you know, Fantilli or one of those guys in the bottom. They want to make sure they come last. And then they'll worry about the goaltending after. Uh, so if the Cody's were to trade a player who is still relatively young and is among the best talents they have, that would come to quite the blow and would fly against the message of their season. The Coyotes seemingly found a potential core piece out of nowhere, signing Vimalka at a relatively unheard of goaltender. Um, it would beg the question of what the Coyotes are even trying to accomplish as a franchise. And that's the thing. I, I kind of agree with that, to tell you the honest truth. Um, but goaltenders of the Melka's ilk don't come around very often. There's only like five of them in the NHL, maybe six. And, you know, it, it's like I said, it's possible he's the one that made up the decision to do this if they decide to do it too. And they were not going to talk about that. They're not, they're going to protect his integrity and all of that. He doesn't want the vitriol from the fans and all that kind of stuff like that. So we don't totally know. I think that's very possible that that's the case. To tell you the honest truth, I think it's very likely that it's the case. So let's look here at uh, what Arizona has. I mean, they do want that 2023 first round pick. And Vimalka is a goaltender that is almost that a team might just give that up. 2023 first. One of the deepest drafts we've seen in a very long time. If you are going to trade them, for sure you're going to want that. And maybe more. It's Goaltenders, it's tough to put a value on them. I mean, most teams tend to think that they can find a goaltender. Because um, there's more goaltenders available. It's only one per position. It's not like wingers or centers or you know seven defensemen. It's one per position. But elite guys like this, I think I think he'll garner at least a first and maybe even a prospect on top of it myself. But we'll take a look at each one, and we'll take a look at him himself. He's from Czechia. He's 26 years old. He's a big goaltender, 6'3", 203 pounds. Um, and he's signed to a reasonable contract. That's the other thing. You got two more years at two million seven, you know, two point seven million. Any team that's getting them is getting a steal for the next couple of years for their number one goaltender on cap space. Like there should be teams salivating all over the place for this. Um, his numbers three point three four and a point nine zero two this year. There's nothing wrong with that on a team deep with the defense that Arizona has. If you can even stay over point like. 9 0 0. I'd say you're doing very, very well. He's been peppered with shots so many games. Arizona has been totally outshot and they win, and it's almost all the Melka. And they say he was the Melka. All right, let's look at some of the seven teams that we're looking at here. The first team I'm looking at is the Columbus Blue Jackets. And there's several reasons why I think that. I, I put Columbus on the list. It is the first team, so it's kind of the least likely, and I'll kind of explain why as we go along here. Um, one of the big reasons, I, I do think that Elvis Merzlikens is probably going to move on from Columbus. They're just looking for the right deal. It's really sad. He had his uh, friend die, Kivaranta, I believe. is Kivaranta, is that? Please, if I got that wrong, I can't remember his name now. But he died, and Elvis was there. And not only that, it was a, like a uh, uh, um, fireworks, and it went off. And apparently his friend jumped in front of it, and it killed him. 
saving a child and maybe even Elvis and all kinds of stuff. So this is like something that's in his head. And here in Columbus, they shoot off cannons every time there's a goal. Oh, man. Uh, PTSD, maybe? Like, it just, it's not working out. So, I think, you know, Arizona doesn't really need, they, they can take a project like Elvis Merzlikens. Before all that happened, he was looking like he was going to be a stud goaltender, and he's struggled mightily since. So, he could go to Arizona where there's no pressure on him and maybe turn it around and become what everybody thought he would. Uh, I don't think that would be the only thing. When it comes to Columbus, I think the biggest problem in, in, in this deal is they already have Daniel Tarasov, um, who is kind of their future goaltender. But I don't think that totally takes it away. Kekalainen is an uh, amazing European, uh, uh, knows European talent. Um, of course, he's from Europe. And I think if... if uh, if he if he can get a chance to get one a goaltender like Bamelka, I think he's in. I really do. Even though he has Tarasov, they can fight it out, and you can trade another goaltender. Um, they 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 have problems on defense, and they have to rebuild this defense. So, if that's the case, pretty good idea to have a shut down goaltender. And this is not a team, I believe that can afford to go for seven or eight years rebuilding. So one way to make it so that doesn't happen is to have a top five goaltender in the league. So I would say Merzlikens maybe. Um, I There's no way they're getting the 2023 first in this because, I mean, Columbus is in the bottom of the league. They could get Bedard. There's no way they're giving up the 2023 first in this deal um, maybe the 2024 maybe and, and it would be protected top 10 protected or something like that um, and a prospect possibly um, the other thing that they could do is they could send more player and closer NHL ready players like Carson Kuhlman's on defense um, that they drafted, what, two years ago? Let me find him here now. Looks like he's going to be a solid defenseman. The thing is, is that I don't think they want to trade from defense if they if they don't have to. But to get a guy like that, maybe they're willing to do it. But Carson Kuhlman's a second-round pick. Merzlikens, you know, maybe a little more. It depends how many people are going to be rolling out um, – you know, clamoring for Vimelka. And if he's out there, there could be still a lot of clamoring. It's just, it's hard to get elite goaltenders like that. It's very hard. It's it's okay. People say, well, you can always find a goaltender. But you can't always find an elite goaltender. Maybe Jake Bean. You could throw Jake Bean in there. I know that's another defenseman, but they got to restructure that whole defense anyways. Like, there's so many. They have too many defensemen that are the same in this uh, here. Blankenberg. Boquist, you know, Gavrikov has already said he pretty much is on, on his way out. So they're going to have to restructure that whole defense anyways. And to get a great goaltender like that, I think they just might go down that way. Um, subscribe to my channel, Columbus fans, to my YouTube channel. Comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think about that. Next, Colorado. And I think uh, most Colorado fans are going to be like, hmm? What? We already got Gorgiev, though. Well, Gorgiev hasn't been knocking out of the park as far as I'm concerned. 2.75 and a .914. I know Colorado's been injured. Things have been, um, you know, it's been a little bit difficult there. But I don't really see him stealing a lot of games. Um, I, I was a little concerned when they picked him up from New York, because I thought that the way he handled the situation with his time with Shesterkin seemed fairly immature to me, to tell you the honest truth. Um, he seemed like he was overwhelmed by the fact that he was not going to be number one, that everybody loves Shesterkin, 
and uh, he seemed shaky a lot because of it, which had me questioning his mental toughness. And, you know, that can turn around here. Don't beat me up, Colorado fans. I mean, he could do great or whatever the case may be. But to tell you the honest truth, if the milk is available, you got to look at it. Gorgiev is never going to be as good as Vimelka is now. I just do not believe that. Gorgiev could go back in this deal. He has the net for sure over there. Like, it would be his. He can develop any way he wants to, anyhow. Right? He's going to catch a lot of rubber, so he's going to get a lot of practice time in. Now, the thing about this is, it would have to be the 2023 first. And Gorgiev, maybe more, maybe. I would hope that that would be enough. But, I mean, we're talking about an elite goaltender here. It really depends on how much the other teams push the envelope for him. And if maybe another pick or a prospect. Maybe a Martin Cout or something like that. Colorado fans, let me know. Really, let's talk. You think Gorgiev is like? I know, I know. You won a cup with um, Darcy Kemper, who really didn't have a great playoffs, um, and still won. And so you don't really like Colorado hasn't really needed needed to have a great goaltender. But what would be wrong with having one, especially one? that's getting like $1.7 million for the next two or three years, you're actually getting cap space in this deal. That's why I think you might even have to add more. I would do it. Tell me what you think, Colorado fans. Comment in the comment section. Subscribe to my channel and let me know what you think. All right, the Edmonton Oilers. Yes, well, this is interesting because <coughs> how are you going to get – Jack Campbell's contract off the books, right? If you're going to do something like this. Now, Jack Campbell has gone into one of his three or four day game stretches where he's playing well right now. Um, they're pretty much all in on him. I didn't check before I started this. He has a no movement clause. I imagine Arizona would be in that clause. So I, I don't think you're getting Jack Campbell back here. But Possibly Stuart Skinner. And then, like I said, Vimelka is $1.7 million for the next two or three years. You don't need to worry about up, re-upping for another couple of years. He could steal a spot from Jack Campbell. Him and Jack Campbell can, can uh, fight it out, which I believe Vimelka will win easily. But, man... With this team having a struggle defensively the way they do, uh, playing a little better as of late, but a guy like Vamelka, like you're just mixing in a Vasilevsky, Sorokin, Shesterkin almost level goaltender and could be hitting his prime. So, you know, he, he could hit that into a high impact offense like this. Um, I got to look at it. I, I, it would be more than Stuart Skinner for sure. No doubt about that. I mean, I'm going, I want Broberg. I want the 2023 first, maybe not Broberg and the 2023 first, but the 2023 first or Broberg. Um, maybe they might be able to get away with Evan Bouchard instead. Broberg does look really good. Um, he looks like he's going to be a really good defenseman. Uh, but maybe you can get away with Jesse Pugliarvi, who has struggled in Edmonton to find offense going to Arizona. I mean, this guy is an awesome two-way winger, and the offense has got to come. His expected offense is so good, but he can't produce. It's really weird. I don't know if it's stress, if it's in, like some, it's in his head, something's in his head, but Pugliarvi, Skinner, the 2003 first, and maybe even one more prospect here, I swear. Like, I mean, this is a, an amazing goaltender. And I would do it. I'm just doing what I would do. Let's put it that way. I would do that. Um, and I would give a, a prospect to go with it as well. Somebody like 
Uh, Xavier Bourgeau really hasn't did all that well in his time in the AHL, to tell you the honest truth. Or like Raphael Lebois. I keep Xavier. Raphael Lebois, take your pick. Tell us what you want. Like, look at our prospects. Give me something. Tell me what you're going to do, Colorado fans. Because I would be all over this. And I don't know if Edmonton Oilers fans are going to think that as well. Uh, I'll post it on the Facebook. And if you're listening, subscribe to my YouTube channel and comment in the comment section. I'll talk back and forth to you. Now, before we go on to L.A., I want to say that if you go in the comment section, I will answer you. I will disagree with you. I will agree with you. I will not. Whatever. You don't have to be kind. This is sports. This is hockey. All right. I think you're, I don't take it personally or anything like that, but you can be, and that's fine. Generally, I'm not a person that gets too aggressive, but I will give an opinion for sure. So we can agree to disagree, but I like disagreeing if you disagree. I don't mind. Just keep on disagreeing with me. Give me all your reasons. Have something in your back pocket to tell me what it is that you're saying, because that's how I learn. That's how we all learn, right? All right, Los Angeles. Okay, Los Angeles Kings. I would be all over this if I was a Los Angeles Kings. To me, they are one amazing goaltender away from being a contender, a serious contender. And they've got pieces to trade. Um, I know that they're looking at defensemen as well. And Phoenix Copley has been doing very well. But, I mean... Nine point a point nine zero four. They're sc- they're scoring for him. Okay, he's not an elite goaltender. He's just doing better than Jonathan Quick, which this year is not all that difficult to do. So, I mean, I think it's time to hang him up. But I, Jonathan Quick, go to find your perch in the Hall of Fame that you deserve, and kind uh, of. Kind of head off into the sunset. I think it's time to go. Everybody loves you. You're amazing. But I think it's time to move on. You get Vimalka. You're not going to trade quick back. There's no way. Uh, he's not going there. He's got a no movement clause. It might have to be uh, Peterson, who is down in the minors right now. Um, he's making $5 million a year. They've got cap space there. They can give him a shot. Where is he? Cal Peterson. Not doing too bad in the minors. Uh, Had a really rough go in the NHL this year, though. Um, You know, but they can work with him there in Arizona because wins are not really what they're going for. So he, all the pressure's off Cal if he goes to Arizona. And I know this is difficult because it's interdivision, too. And because it's an interdivision division trade, you're going to have to give up more. Thing is, LA's got tons to give up. In this trade. First thing I would say. Um, 2023 first. Maybe. Okay. A package to do with something like this. A 2023 first. Or. Um, Gabriel Velarde. Or and or. And or. Uh, maybe a Kaliev. I mean, that's surreal. I wouldn't, I love that guy. I don't think I would give up on Kaliev. 21 years old, he's already a, I, I would try to have him not in this deal at all. Um, I know people are going to say Alex Turcotte, let's face it. He's not, he's not working out. He'd be a throw in at this point. You need something with some meat. You need really good players. Jordan Spence is kind of buried. So let's go Jordan Spence, the 2023 first. Peterson, and maybe another prospect on top of that. I mean it. Like, I think, and then maybe an Alex Turcotte, maybe something like that. Um, I I think it's going to cost a lot. I really do. It's going to cost a ton of prospects. Um, And to tell, I would do this if that's what it had to take. I would try to do it for less, of course. Like you always try to do it for less. I'm just going by value here. I would do this if I was L.A. But Melka is the type of goaltender that can win you series, can win you games. And you got the talent that L.A. has right now. They should be in win-now mode, man. Totally. Kopitar is not getting any younger. Um, 
Look at I follow Dano and Arvidsson are all 29 years old. I mean, they got a couple of years. I, I think Lele's window is still like a couple of years. But a guy like Vamelka, you can get two cups. He's that good, man. I would easily give up a package like that for him. Personally, I would. I don't know if Arizona is going to like the idea of trading with, trading uh, within division now. Like they want, if they're going to trade Vamelka, they want him in the East if they can. And so, like, so. Which brings us to the next team, LA Kings fans. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're on Facebook, you can't subscribe on that button. You're going to actually have to go look me up, Perlo Wisdom, and subscribe on YouTube. Go to YouTube, search Perlo Wisdom. I wish Facebook would just let you subscribe. It's stupid. I don't know why. But okay, next. Pittsburgh Penguins. That's right. And if I'm Pittsburgh, I am all over this. All over this. Tristan Jari has had his ups. He's had his downs. When he's really good, he's great. But consistency has been an issue. Injuries have been an issue. And Pittsburgh, I wouldn't want, if I'm Pittsburgh, I don't want to be rolling my rolling the dice on whether Jari's going to be healthy or if he's going to be on, a, on his hot streak or his cold streak or what he is. They need to win now, 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 now. Like, so now. Their window is, like, pretty much shut for winning. They, they've they got, um, I don't know, cap space is an issue, but, I mean, he's only making 1.7 or 2.7. Like, there's, you could put Jari in the deal. You Jari would be in the deal for sure. Jari would be going back for sure. Now, okay, first of all, I better make sure before I go off and say all this stuff, you silly goose. I better make sure that he doesn't have a no trade clause. Is anyone being the deal? And this might nix all of this. Okay. He does not have a no trade clause. And this is the last year of his contract. So he can go to Arizona. Uh, then he, if he doesn't want to sign after that, it doesn't really matter that much, but it does lessen the value of this asset for Arizona. Um, if I was Jari, I would strongly consider um, staying there in Arizona. You're going to be a number one for a long time, but... Now, I'm not him. I don't know his family or whatever the case may be. But Jari could be part of the deal to make the money work. And then forget about your 2023 first. And forget about it protecting it. It would be an unprotected 2023 first round pick. Um, probably Jari. And a prospect like Philip Hollander or something like that. I know you're emptying, emptying the cupboards, but... What else are you going to do? You, Vimelka is the kind of goaltender that can steal you ser a series and maybe even a cup. He's amazing. He's way better than Jari. Way better. It's like getting a Sorokin right now, Pittsburgh fans. It's like getting a Sorokin. Now, for an older team like Pittsburgh who – um. Kind of has some depth issues. I, I, they're not. You look at the roster. I look at the roster, and I this does not scream contender to me. This roster, they've got guys like Demelin that are in there now. Um, you know, Petrie. I, I thought that was really a poor pickup, to tell you the honest truth. At this stage of his career, at thirty-five, when Latang's in there, it's it's much better. But it it's not like a powerhouse team. You put. Vamelka in though. You put great goaltenders like that in a team that's average or above average, you sort of become a contender right away. And if Pittsburgh has any chance, I think that's what they got to do. They got to have uh, if they can get if they can get an elite goaltender like that, I, I think they have no choice. Personally, they may disagree. Maybe you disagree. Subscribe to my channel and let me know. Go to, if you're on Facebook, search 
Perlo Wisdom. NHL Perlo Wisdom on YouTube and sign up. Ah, so you can get all this content. Make sure you hit the little bell thing in the jigger there. Make sure you hit that. If you want to like you want to see it come up right to you, hit that bell thing. And as soon as I do the video, it's like bing! Perlo's trade video. Woo! There. All right. And we haven't hit the most likely at the second most likely team we're going to be looking at here, the Buffalo Sabres. If there is a team out there that is more primed for a stud goaltender, and I know, I don't know, I don't know what you guys are going to say, think about uh, um, Lukanen. He's 23 years old. He's come up. He's did well. He's kind of, he's been... They're here and there. Sometimes he looks fantastic. Sometimes he looks meh. To me, he looks like he's not ready till he's about 26, 27, sort of like what Allmark did. But Melka is 26 right now and ready, and I think better than Lukanen could ever imagine being. So, while we go back, I think Lukanen would go back in this deal. You just send Lukanen, he's got a great opportunity to... to uh, to get tons of shots and work, <laughs> be in the NHL, get peppered with shots and grow as a goaltender with no, uh, you know, no pressure at all in Arizona because I'm not really caring about winning right now. Um, that wouldn't be the only one as well because the uh, uh, is way better than him, way better than him right now. Top fives, top, top nine in the league. And he's probably going to get just get better and better and better. Like, he is insane. Um, so, what else would go back here? There's a lot of things you could do. I think that they're looking for the draft picks, right? So, the 2023 first would be big. And if you do give the 2023 first, that is a huge... You, pro they, you probably would be able to get away with um, a... A prospect. I mean, Isaac Rosen. These are really good guys. I don't know. Maybe a Lawrence Pilot. He he really pilot. pilot, pilot. Isn't it Pilot or Pilot? Um, you're certainly not getting uh, Savoy, but Proctor, Poltapoff, guys like that. The 2023 first, a decent prospect. Um, I don't think. You'd have to give up Isaac Rosen or Yuri Coolidge, who look like fantastic prospects. But would I do it? I, I'm, I'd consider it. I would consider it for sure. That, that's how good he is. Buffalo, if you get Vimelka from Arizona next year, I say you make the playoffs easy. Easy. You now become a team right on the precipice of being elite with a guy like Vimelka. And aren't we tired in Saberland of waiting another year and another year and another year? This team is right on the edge, sort of like the New Jersey Devils were. They're right on the edge right now. You get an elite goaltender like that, you're over the edge. It's 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 go time, my friends. Subscribe to my channel, Buffalo Sabres fans. Comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think about getting somebody like Vimelka. And what would you give? You got to remember, not what you want to give. I mean, nobody wants to give anything up. Like, what would you go like? What would you give up off your roster? What's the most that you would give up off your roster to get an elite goaltender? Elite. That's what I want to know. All right. Next, Ottawa Senators. I think the Ottawa Senators would be all over this like stink on poop. Big time. If this team is going, this team obviously is not happy with rebuilding. They just don't like it. They don't want to do it. We did enough. We have enough prospects. I don't know if they do or not. You know, they got some pretty good guys coming up, but I wouldn't say they're loaded with prospects, to tell you the honest truth. Um, Boucher, Ostap, Chuck, those guys are, are really good. Um, and uh, 
you know, Tyler Clevin coming up. But, I mean, it's not like they got a list. Like, LA, the L.A. Kings have a better prospect pool than Ottawa. And they just started saying there's no rebuild. I would think you would want to get a more of a pool than this, but it doesn't appear like they can uh, feel like they can afford to. So, if you're not going to do it right, if you're not going to keep on just taking prospect, 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 building, so you're so full of prospects that you can start using them for trade, then I would say get yourself an elite goaltender. Because with an elite goaltender, that can mask a lot of problems that you may have. Uh, for sure, no doubt about that. Defense problems is something they have right now. Uh, Jake Sanderson's going to be a beast. That's obvious. Uh, Bernard Docker's just trying to figure it out there. And they do have some guys that look like they're going to be players in uh, Lassie Thompson is coming up as well. Um, you know, maybe one of these other guys start to pop up. But, I mean, they're not loaded, loaded, loaded. Really, they're not. Tyler Clevin eventually, he's 21 already, and he's, you know, he's not having a great year this year, honestly. But once you get an elite goaltender, you always got a chance. So since, you know, they're not thinking about prospects, 2023 first, I would be protect protected. That would be enough here because Ottawa's out of a playoff spot. Either that or the 2024 first in a, in a good, solid prospect. A solid prospect. And you go, you'd have to give up a goaltender as well. Did when they – does Cam Talbot have a no-trade clause? I doubt it. Uh, doo, doo, doo. Yeah, you could, you could toss Cam Talbot or Forsberg, either one, whichever one you think. I think they'd rather have the have uh, Forsberg's thirty. They'd rather have the younger Forsberg. Uh, oh man, that hurts that you lost Gustafsson, all right? Oops. Uh, but you can make up for it now. You have the Melka Forsberg, two thousand twenty four first protected, and a prospect of some kind. Ridley Gregg. <coughs> Who? How's he doing so far this year? 23 points in 25 games in the AHL. Oh, that's really good. I, yeah, I wouldn't be moving on from that. Uh, that Not that good of a prospect. I didn't realize he was doing that. Wow, holy crap. You got a gooder coming up there. Um, one of these prospects. <laughs> Trying to figure out who. Say, say uh, uh, say uh, Zach Ostachuk. He looks like he's going to be a bottom pairing guy. Something like that. But it's going to cost a lot, man. 2024, top 10 protected. Okay? and Or just give the 2024 unprotected. There you go. That'll do it right there. I think that'll do it right there. Make sure you hit it out of the park, though, next year for sure. But it's worth it, man. It's it's worth it. Forsberg in the 2024. I would do it if you get a guy as good as Bramalco with that pick. That's a great pick. So you already know you got a Bramalco, or you can go into the pool and see if that prospect works out when you already get a stud, freaking amazing goaltender. Okay, that's my full 42. Thanks for listening to everybody. Tell me what you thought of the video. Subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you would give up for Vimelka. Until next time, have a great day.